Hi guys, welcome to the archive. In the last two videos, I showed you how to make a modular temple and the core walls and battlements of the system. To make a tower, you'll need four stair pieces from the temple video and then two tiles and four battlement pieces from the wall video. I'll just link both of those videos below for you. Today, I'll be showing you how I added corners to the battlements, which allow me to make the towers and keep along with the removable modular doors, trap doors and postern gates that work with them. In the videos I'll be releasing later this month, I'll also show you how I made the gate and the accessories that you can use both with it and the walls and temple. As I might have mentioned previously, this project is designed to be as simple or as complex as you yourself would like to make it. You can make as much or as little of it as you want. You can start work on these in any order you want. If you think that a gate will be the most useful to you and that video has been released, just jump over and start there. Then you can either stop or go on and build the walls and towers afterwards. Or you can work vice versa and build the walls or towers first. Most of this stuff can be used separately too. The tiles and stairs can be used as part of a dungeon build and so on and so on. If you haven't seen it already, there's also a video earlier in this playlist where I go through all the different ways you can use the terrain from these videos, including some scenario ideas. So let me know if you find that useful. Turning a few wall pieces into a tower is as simple as adding corners to the battlements and a few doors. As I've mentioned previously, the example towers shown here are my prototypes and have slightly thicker flat tiles and battlement floors. Just ignore that, yours will look even better. I'm actually slightly jealous. To get started on these four corner pieces, for each piece all you'll need is two one inch by half an inch squares of XPS insulation foam, two half an inch by one inch by half an inch bricks, and two cooked cocktail sticks one inch long each with one pointed end. I've included links below to everything I've used where possible. We start off by drawing half inch bricks on the one inch squares like this. Then you need to cut and texture these pieces by cutting an eighth of an inch into each line, cutting chunks and strips out of the edges, beveling the internal edges with a ballpoint pen, and then texturing all sides using some rolled up tin foil. Cut the edges and tinfoil texture the half inch bricks too. If you want to know more about this technique, including some tips, check out the temple video. From there, glue one square to the top of the other to be the wall, and glue one brick in the gap that remains, like this. Then glue the other brick on top of the connection between the brick and the wall, like this. This ensures we have the brick on the right side and that we have some variation in brick patterns. Finally, push the cocktail sticks halfway in using the pointed end, halfway up each wall like this. These should connect with the holes that you made in the battlement edges in the previous video. Once you've got your corner pieces, you can attach them to your stairs, tiles and battlements like this. Placing a tile in the center of the tower allows you to place a door at wall level. But that isn't required. For example, if the tower is going to be used on its own, you don't need to include this middle piece, though it does help to break up the stonework. Making these modular doors is fairly straightforward, and they can be used for a ton of different things, including as extra or impromptu doors with my building slash dungeon tile system I'll be uploading soon. The card tab simply tucks under the tower pieces in this case, and holds the door in place. To make each door, you'll need four pieces of two inch by quarter inch balsa wood strips or you can use craft lollipop sticks that you've cut down to this size. You'll also need some quarter inch thick foam to cut from, about three inches square should do. And you'll need some cereal card, about five inches square of that should do. 
and some 5mm jewellery rings and crimp covers, which you should be able to pick up from a craft store. The first step is to create a cardboard guide to cut the foam and the wood. We want a nice arched top to our door. As a little thank you to my patrons to make this easier, I've uploaded a quick template which you can print out and stick to the card before cutting it out instead of drawing it yourself. If you'd like to use this, just check out my Patreon page in the description. Alternatively, of course, the guide can just be drawn on and cut from the serial card using a sharp X-Acto knife, for the curves at least, to get a nice clean cut. It should be one and a half inches by two inches with an arch that begins about half an inch from the top. You'll want to test the cutout edge of your card framework against your wire to make sure that it doesn't catch too much. If it does though, you can just trim any annoying bits using a knife. You'll also need to draw a second line about a quarter of an inch thick inside the first, which will give us the shape of our arch and the shape of our door inside it. You'll need to cut them both out like this. Once you've got your template, you can use it with a hot wire cutter to cut the foam into the shape we need. This requires some careful use as the template is quite thin and needs you to hold it down so it won't move as you cut. A way to make this easier is to trim off the foam in small chunks rather than one sweeping movement. If it doesn't cut perfectly smooth, don't worry about it too much. You can use a, tr a knife to trim down any bumps and honestly, you're going to texture it anyway so bumps will probably blend in. Also, for anyone using a knife, you can cut this using a knife. A hot wire just makes it easier and faster. Once you've got your arch cut out, you'll want to draw quarter inch bricks, including a keystone at the top, onto them. To do this, cut about an eighth of an inch into them and then bevel it with a ballpoint pen. Trim the edges slightly with a knife and then texture using tin foil, just as we have on almost all the other stone pieces. You'll need to do this on three of four sides. It's best to leave the back of the door flat. This step can be very delicate, so don't panic if your frame snaps. You can easily hot glue the pieces back together again. Once we have our frame, we need our door. For this, I've used a quarter inch balsa wood strips that I've cut down to two inch pieces. But you can use craft lollipop sticks if you carefully cut them down to a quarter inch in width. They're just harder to work with. Use these two inch pieces to make a door one inch across and two inches high. First, you'll want to trim the edges of one side of the wood to give it a worn look. Then use tacky glue to seal the pieces together. Once that's done, place your door template over the top and draw on where to cut. This is easier with the balsa wood than it is with craft sticks, as I mentioned, but it is still perfectly possible. I did test. I'd advise cutting small chunks at a time and cut large chunks away with a small amount left next to the line, which you can then trim away more easily. This helps prevent the wood from cracking or shattering when you're cutting and ruining all of the hard work. 
Once you've got your door, it needs a handle. Most craft stores will stock jewellery making bits and bobs, and these 5mm rings and crimp covers are very useful for making door handles. To do this, take the ring and the crimp cover and use a pair of preferably needle nose pliers, though you don't have to, to close the gap. Once closed, I rotated the crimp cover around until the connecting gap was level with the pliers and then squeezed again. This can be a little bit hit and miss and it isn't strictly required, but I found I was able to flatten one side of the cover, making it easier to glue flush with the door. Speaking of which, glue it to the door. I used a piece of blue tack to hold the crimp cover in place, as there's less chance of accidentally catching my skin and bonding the whole lot instantly, with bits of my skin attached for flavour. If you want to make sure your skin doesn't attach to the blue tack, wrap the blue tack in a little bit of kitchen towel first where you're going to be holding it. it makes it so much easier. We then just need to glue it about an inch from the bottom, which is about door handle height. Once your door is complete, I found that it was easier to paint the door and the frame separately. Starting with the door, I gave it a base coat of raw umber acrylic paint mixed with just a little bit of water um, and give it a base coat until it was a solid colour. I then dry brushed it with a two to one mix of tan to raw umber for an aged wood look. You could paint it in a richer wood, as I did for this prototype gate, but I found that it looked a little bit too well kept and rich to work as part of a modular piece. It just didn't look right on the evil variants. That said, if you do want to use this colour, it's just a base coat of three parts raw umber to one part raw sienna, which I've then dry brushed with two parts yellow ochre to one part raw sienna. Craft paint colours are fairly universal, but you should be able to find a roughly similar colour at the very least. Finally, you get to paint the handle with a metallic paint of your choice. I chose gunmetal, which is a darker steel look, I also gave it a wash of strong tone brown wash to bring the brightness down and add some shadow and grime. Once the door is done, you can paint the archway, which I did using the technique mentioned in my painting stone video, which I will link in the description. With your two pieces painted, you can now use hot glue to seal them together at the flat back of the stone piece. I did this one side at a time and I used a knife to carefully trim off any excess glue from the back. Once the door is painted, it's now easier to attach the hinges. I've made another little template for my patrons as another little thank you, but if you didn't want to use that, then you can just cut out two thin strips of serial card instead. If you do use the template, just pick the design that you want to use and glue it to some serial card before cutting it out carefully with an X-Acto knife as it is quite delicate work. There are designs on the template ranging from the easy to the challenging, so you can pick one that you're comfortable with. Once your hinge is cut out, use a pin vise hand drill to drill little indents, but not full holes, down the length where there are dots on the template. Don't worry too much if you do drill a full hole, um, it will just mean you have to fill in the gap with black paint when you're done. Once your little holes are done, you can use a sharp X-Acto knife to trim any excess card that has raised up at the edges where you drilled, if you want to. Um, I kind of decided to do it, but then I could see where it could look quite good um, just leaving it as it is. If you have any loose pieces of flapping card, those are things that you would probably want to cut away though. Then just use some blue tack to hold them, paint the hinges black, and tacky glue them to the door near the top and bottom. I gave each one a coat of Mod Podge thinned down with water. This should protect the card and also adds a slight shine to it that I think works well to represent that kind of glossy black paint you find on historical fittings like this. Finally, cut a 2 inch by 1 inch piece of serial card, fold it in two and glue it to the back of the door. Make sure this piece is heavily folded, we want the card to almost pull the door into place against the wall. Once you've got that, your door is complete, wibbly handle and all. Once you have the technique down, it's quite easy to mass produce these with some YouTube or whatever on in the background, much like most of the pieces that I've shown. 
Now we can make the modular trapdoor, which follows a similar technique for the door, but is much simpler. So to make it, you'll need three pieces of three quarters of an inch by one quarter of an inch balsa wood strips or craft sticks, two pieces of one and a quarter inch by a quarter inch XPS foam, two pieces of three quarter inch by one quarter inch XPS foam, and some more five millimeter jewelry rings and crimp covers. Once you've got all of that, just cut and texture all but one side of the foam pieces and hot glue them into a square. You can then just paint it using the painting stone tutorial that I have linked in the description below. For the door, cut strips from the edges of one side of each piece before gluing them together with tacky glue exactly as we did for the modular door. Weirdly enough, you attach the handle in the same way too. You'll want it on one side in the centre this time, as you can see here. Then you just need to paint the trap door and glue it into the frame exactly the same as we did for the modular door. Now onto the arrow slits, which are fantastic for breaking up an otherwise quite monotone looking wall and giving it some more representation of actually having an indoors. To make some, you'll just need some one and a half inch by half inch by an eighth of an inch XPS foam that you've cut and a half inch cocktail stick. To start off, draw and bevel across into the center of the foam, stopping short of the edge by a small amount each time. You'll then want to cut four chunks from the edge of the foam. It's easiest to do this with an X-Acto knife rather than a craft knife. It's a bit too delicate for a big blade. Then just cut strips away from the sharp edges of the foam and texture it with tin foil. You'll then want to cut the end of the cocktail stick at a 45 degree angle and super glue it to the back of the foam, just under the lowest wide bit. Super glue will melt the foam, but it shouldn't be enough to damage the other side. The bond that it makes though will be very strong, which in this case is kind of worth a little bit of melting. It can even be worth adding an extra blob of glue here just to be sure. Once you've got that stick securely glued, if you find that you need to, trim what you need to from the back of the cocktail stick to make sure it doesn't stick out any more than just under half an inch. Finally, paint the stone as per my painting stone tutorial that I've linked below and paint the inside of the cross black to imitate that depth. These pieces are probably the most delicate accessories, so it's worth taking care when you're using them and making sure that the accessory holes are wide enough to not grip the piece too tightly. A little trick you can use if you find that the angle that you glued uh, your cocktail stick onto is now not quite the angle you want, you can squash the foam a little bit either way um, and retain everything else about the piece and it should let you line up the cocktail stick with your accessory slots. The final modular toy that I added to this build was the postern gate or secret door. This was actually a lot of fun to come up with a solution for, especially one that included some printable wizardry for my patrons, though you can totally make one without that feature. To get started on making one, all you'll need is one piece of two inch by one inch XPS foam. You'll want it about a quarter of an inch thick for the stone front. You'll need one piece of two inch by two and a sixteenth of an inch serial card for the doorway. Yes, that is unbelievably specific and it is for a good reason. And you'll also need one piece of one and a half inch by three quarters of an inch serial card for the attaching piece. You'll also need three pieces of one and seven eighths of an inch long balsa wood strips or cut down lollipop sticks. Step one is pretty straightforward. Just cut and texture all of the stone frontage as two one inch blocks so it matches the wall or tower and paint using the painting stone tutorial mentioned in the description. Then take your card for the doorway and fold it in half along the slightly longer edge so it stands just over two inches tall like this. This is so that it should cover up the gap of the stone that it is in front of even when you're looking at it, at it from a slightly higher angle. Then take the other piece of card, fold it in half and tacky glue it to the back of the doorway piece like this. If you have trouble getting them to stick easily, a quick trick can be to use a knife to trim the printed layer off the card, though you do have to be quite careful as it is very thin. 
Once you've got your doorway standing up like that, trim down the door section at the top and bottom to allow for it to be concealed and tacky glue your painted stone piece to the front. You'll want to make sure the piece stands up straight and covers two blocks with the stone door touching the floor, as the stone door, if it is off the ground, will pull the doorway forwards. Finally, cut strips from the edges of one side of the balsa wood strips, tacky glue all three of them together, and tacky glue them to the inside of the stone doorway, which should conceal the cardboard connection. This is where I've added another little thank you to my patrons. If you don't want to use this, simply paint the doorway black. If you do want to use this, head over to my Patreon page and download the Postern Gate doorway file. Print this out on either normal or photo paper, depending on your preference for quality. Photo paper can also be a bit glossy depending on the type, so that's also a consideration. Once you've printed it out, cut it out and tacky glue it to your doorway card and trim the edges to fit if necessary painting them black at the edge once done. At this stage, you can paint the door and stone wall much as we have for the other doors we've done previously. The final step is to hot glue the innermost section of the door and then hold it mostly closed like this. This should stabilize the door, but also further the illusion of the printed interior as it kind of limits the angles that you can look at it from. I hope this has been useful to you guys and you get a lot out of these towers. If so, maybe hit subscribe and hit the bell too if you want to see any future videos including the upcoming gate and accessories. Have you got any ideas that would make this build better? I always love to hear about them in the comments. That's all from me for now. Until next time, I'll be in the archive.